everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome to a very special Goosebumps video. Today I have a guest joining me to lovingly snark on one of the most well-known Goosebumps stories. He's a book reviewer, an adaptation reviewer, and he's British, meaning his commentary will sound extra sarcastic. Everyone, please welcome Dominic Noble from his titular channel, Dominic Noble. Hello, Dominic Noble. Hello, Pushing Up Roses. Say cheese and die. I beg your pardon? That's what we're covering. Say cheese and die. Oh, right, yes. Goosebumps, episode 15 from season one. I'm so glad you're here. I wouldn't want to do this collab provolone. Uh, don't be cheesy. I'm eager to discuss this episode since I had gotten so many requests to review it. Did you know I have other Goosebumps videos on this channel? I do! I talk more about R.L. Stein and his work in some of those other videos, so I won't be reiterating that information here. But when you get a chance, do browse my catalog. But don't stop watching this one. Wait until after. Thank you. As we begin the episode, we are greeted by three characters, Greg, played by baby Ryan Gosling, and Sherry and Bird, his two friends. They seem to be spying on a dilapidated warehouse where they see a suspicious character loitering around. The kids in town call him Spidey because he apparently looks like a spider, but I'm not getting that as much as I'm getting the lost Ramon brother. I heard he eats rats. It's cats. I heard it was bats. I heard it was gnats. I heard it was hats. I heard it was mats. Good God, he ate Matt? Yeah, I heard that too. After Spidey sprints away like a weirdo, the kids sneak inside the building, and because everything exciting always happens in the basement, that's where they end up. While poking around, they discover this high-tech thingamabob. I think this thing's a camera. What? You looked at this thing, and your first thought was camera. It looks like the Rocketeer's head. Bird instructs Greg to take his picture and poses at the top of the stairs, juggling. Say cheese. Cheddar. Oh, Jesus. After the picture is taken, Bird falls over the railing. He's fine, but after that they decide to split. And they run into Spider, but before he can capture them, he also falls off the stairs. <laughs> That's so silly. <laughs> Greg realizes he accidentally took the camera with him, but no one really wants to go back and return it. They look at the picture of Bird, who is not juggling, but falling off the stairs, despite Greg insisting that he took it before it happened. Bird is like, what, it's a great action shot, and thinks nothing of it. Greg returns home with the camera, even though the quality of this photo is something to be desired. Hey, troll. Don't call me that. Okay, Mr. Troll. This is Greg's older brother, Terry, though it could also be Eddie Vedder. Jeremy Spokane, Claire. Uh, who? Oh yeah, there's another person here. Sorry. He pops out of the house to admire dad's new car, truly an unfortunate product of the mid-90s. Terry spots the camera and immediately asks Greg to take his picture, despite Greg's hesitation. Terry poses by the car and Greg snaps a pic. Terry insists on seeing it, but Greg looks horrified and claims it's not processed yet. Monsieur Troll, last call for dinner. Thank you for respecting my title. Before dinner, we get a sneak peek at the photo which shows the new car all banged up. The new car is the talk of the dinner table. Dad is actually so excited about his new wheels that he wants to take it for a drive before they even finish eating. Greg tries to convince his dad to take the car back because it's... too... polished? It's too shiny. It hurts my eyes. Well, he tried. No, he didn't. Yeah, he really didn't. They leave their meal behind and go for a spin. I always wanted a car with a little muscle. Cause my husband sure doesn't have any. Terry and his mum encourage dad to drive a little faster. But watch the speed limit. What speed limit? Though possibly not the most appropriate time, Greg decides to show his folks the picture of the beat up car. However... Suddenly, a semi-truck starts driving right for them, and Dad slams on the brakes, making the car spin out. They're okay, but Greg is shook. Is he, though? Honestly, I can't tell. Gosling's performance is subpar at best. Brace yourselves, because we have come upon the spookiest part of the episode, a slow-motion dream sequence. Ah, Americana. Dad's grilling, Mom is wearing her autumn sweater, and Terry is dual-wielding some corn cobs. It's picturesque, so much so that Greg takes a picture. But, oh no, something's wrong with this clip art. It's not scary, no matter how many sound effects you use, Roses. Shh, I'm making it better. You know, the camera kind of looks like a vagina. Excuse me? Kind of. You're going to have to show your work here, because I'm not seeing it. Any 
Anyway, Greg tries to convince Bird that there is something wrong with the camera, but Bird doesn't buy it, despite the fact that the camera doesn't take film or batteries and looks like it belongs in H.R. Giger's house. The town bullies approach them, fascinated by this glorified toaster. Come on, Joey, look, give it back. It's not mine. That's because it's mine. <laughs> Good one. All right, problem solved. Let's just let these two assholes have the camera. Alas, that would be far too convenient. Instead, Greg yoinks the thing back and makes a run for it. They end up at Sherry's house, who is also desperate to have her photo taken. I don't understand why this is such a big deal. Maybe we are a bit spoiled in this day and age because with smartphones we can take a selfie whenever we want, but I'm old enough to remember when they weren't around and photos were never this exciting an event, and yet all of these characters are just dying to have their picture taken with this magical Doom camera. Come on, how's this? I also can't tell if Sherry's actress is dubbed badly or just not good, but there's definitely something weird about her performance. I'm glad you brought the camera, cause now you can take my picture. Greg snaps the photo, and Sherry is disappointed that she's not in it. She claims he missed her, but the tree behind her is still in the composition. And another peculiar thing is that the photo doesn't have that white frame that instant film needs for processing. That's probably just an oversight by the creators of the episode, because the book cover actually shows something that looks like a Polaroid photo, but I'm a nerd and I notice these things. Sherry insists on taking another photo, but before that can happen, Terry pops in out of nowhere and tells Greg there's been an accident. It's dad. What do you mean an accident? A terrible cloning accident. We have two dads now. Cut to Goofy Dad all banged up after the car crash. His spirits seem to be pretty high at least. Later that evening, there's a knock on the door. We're greeted by Detective Hardboiled and Drama Sunglasses, which is a new show I'm working on. She's a force to be reckoned with. This is a picture of a tree. He wears aviators. You telling us the truth? Together, they are Detective Hardboiled and Drama Sunglasses. The detective informs Greg that Sherry has been missing, making Sherry's photo come to fruition, and despite Greg bumbling this up, they don't bother him further after a few questions. Meanwhile, Spidey is lurking. Help me! I can't see in these stupid glasses! Some time passes and things start to get serious. <sighs> no, I'll never be a clown. Hang on a tick. Yes? So. When you take a picture with this camera, it's going to make something happen, right? Is it definitely always bad? What do you mean? So, what if you were to take my picture and said picture just happened to show me in a rather salacious predicament with a sword-wielding maiden? Dude, this episode is called Say Cheese and Die, Not Have Sex and Cry. Hey, I don't cry after sex. <laughs> So Bird is finally somewhat convinced that there is something wrong with the camera, but refuses to go back to the building with Greg to return it. What a pal. On his way there, Greg just runs into Sherry. She's just there, and she's acting weird. Why is she smiling like that? She informs Greg that she reappeared in her backyard a few hours earlier, and Greg realizes that that coincides with him tearing up the photo, and concludes that that must be what brought her back. That seems like an easy solution. They try to quietly return the camera, but Spidey sneaks up on them and starts babbling. Primitive tribes fear the camera. They believe that if it takes their picture, it will steal their soul. Did we just get weirdo splained? He tells them that he is the camera's inventor, and while he was experimenting, he figured out that it was evil. It doesn't just predict the future like he had wanted, it actually makes the tragic things happen and lets the viewers see what they're about to endure beforehand. Spidey tells the kids that they know too much and he cannot allow them to leave. It's unclear as to whether he was just going to hold them hostage or full-on murder them, but before he can do anything, Sherry grabs the camera and takes his picture. Instead of spitting out a creepy photo, he instead gets trapped in the camera. This camera certainly seems inconsistent when it comes to powers. I'd also love to know how Spidey even went about inventing it. How did he make this thing? And how did he manage to make it badly? Seems like everything is fine until the two bullies from earlier, who followed Sherry and Greg, sneak in and snatch the camera for themselves. They take a photo and start giggling at the result, while Spidey looms over them, looking extremely unthreatening. Right, final thoughts. Well, that was a load of nothing. I like the concept of the camera, but this episode was so fast-paced that I didn't even have time to think about it. The villain is on the weaker side, he's just so goofy, and I know there's a certain amount of camp that goes into the Goosebumps television series, but for someone who is described as looking like a spider, lurking around in the shadows with long, spindly legs, he's pretty inoffensive. 
I don't think he looks anything like a spider. He looks more like Brent Spiner's character from Independence Day. I do wonder if adding so many goofy elements to the show was to diffuse some of the scarier moments for their younger viewers. This book actually boasts some frightening visuals and a more serious tone, but there is a difference between a kid reading about a scary event and seeing it play out on screen. The acting is one of the most egregious things in this episode. Ryan Gosling, bless him, is clearly trying his best, but falling short of a believable performance. The character of Greg is supposed to be anxious, continually questioning his sanity and wondering who he can confide in about the camera. He does express some concern, especially after him and his family nearly get hit by a semi, but other than that, he's pretty milk toast. I think we all know by now who I thought was particularly bad. I don't want to be too critical because these actors are kids, and I can't imagine these show's audience is going to be that invested in the caliber of their performances, but in this case, Sherry's actress was just throwing us both off. I couldn't even tell if she was supposed to be herself after coming back or not. Her tone made me think that maybe Spidey had hypnotized her or inducted her into some evil cult. Are you okay? Yeah. Well, I guess so. Still, I believe this would have been better if they fleshed out the characters more and used more of the source material. Something interesting about this story in general is that it was inspired by a Twilight Zone episode called A Most Unusual Camera. R.L. Stein was a big Rod Serling fan, and many of his books were inspired by him. There are some similarities between Stein's story and A Most Unusual Camera, but I would say the intentions of the people who find the camera are way different. Stein took the premise and made it his own, but I still recommend watching the Twilight Zone episode to see how how it influenced him. That about does it for this video, but we're not just going to be talking about the TV episode in this crossover, are we, Dom? No, we most certainly are not. And why is that? Cause this isn't just a crossover, it's a double crossover! Ooh, tell us more! I just so happen to be the proprietor of a web show in which I compare film and television shows to their books, and Say Cheese and Die just so happens to be a perfect candidate. Shall we adjourn to my channel and continue this discussion there? You talk funny. Hey now. If there is an episode of Goosebumps you are just dying to see us compare to the book, then please leave a comment. And until then, stay, stay spooky. spooky. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the first part of this Goosebumps crossover. I will direct you over to Dom's channel at the end of this video, but first I want to give a hearty thank you to my patrons. Every month I am astounded by the generosity and support I receive from you, which allows me to keep making videos and trying new things like this collaboration. If you can't donate, no worries, likes, shares, and comments help to push my video. If you're interested in our adaptation review, please check it out on Dom's channel. There will be a link to that on the right. I also have more Goosebumps reviews on this channel, but you should go watch the rest of our collab first. Then you can come back. You will come back, won't you? Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.